Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this particular video, we'll be looking into very interesting concept which is hubs and authorities. As well as we'll be looking into the very important algorithm which is hits algorithm. Now before moving to the hits algorithm, we'll have to learn these two concepts which is hubs and authorities. So let's have a look at both of them one by one starting with hubs. So hubs are the nodes with many outgoing links. That means just think of a graph data structure. Here in the graph data structure there are nodes as well as there are certain connections between those nodes. Whichever node is pointing to many different other nodes will be called as a hub. Now there is a hub score which characterize how important that particular hub is. So hub score measures a node's importance as a hub. Whichever hub will be having the highest hub score will be called as the best hub node. Now think of a node as a web page. So if a web page is pointing to many other web page, it means that it is a good source of information and it can easily connect the other web pages in the web. Hence, if any of the hub is having the high hub score, it means that it is a good source of information because that hub web page is going to point to many other web pages in the web. Now how to identify whether a node is a hub or not? It can be identified with the help of the algorithm called as hits algorithm. Now these hubs are very much important in search engines, social networks as well as recommendation systems. So to have a clear picture, let's have an example. Here we have one node and that node is surrounded by many other nodes. Now let's say this particular node is pointing to all the other nodes which are present in this particular scenario. That means this particular node is called as hub. It is going to be a good source of information because it is going to connect the other nodes that is the web pages. So I hope the overview of hub is clear to you all. Now we'll move on to the authorities. So let's see an overview of it. So authorities are the nodes with many incoming links. So it is exactly the opposite of the hubs. In hubs, we were looking at the outgoing links, but here in authorities, we are looking into the incoming links. So now let's say if a web page is having many incoming links, that means that web page is very much relevant as well as it is informative because just imagine if a web page is pointing by many other web pages, that means there must be some information in that particular web page. That is why some of the web pages are pointing to it. Hence, these are the web pages which is called as authorities and they are of the highest relevance. Now again, how to decide whether a particular node is a best authority node or not? It is based on the authority score. So it is a measure of node's importance as an authority. If a particular authority node has the highest authority, that means it is considered to be a valuable content on the web. The concept of authorities are very much important in search engines, social networks and recommendation systems as well as they help identify quality sources of information. So now let's take an example. Here we have one node and this particular node which is a web page is surrounded by many other nodes or web pages. Now let's say these all the surrounding web pages are actually pointing towards this particular node. That means this particular node or web page is having the highest importance in terms of relevance or information. This means that this particular node is an authority node. So I hope the concept of authorities and hubs is clear to you all and the difference is also clear. So now let's have a look at the hits algorithm. This algorithm is going to identify whether a particular node is the best authority node or it is the best hub node. So now let's have a look at the overview of it. HITS stands for Hyperlink Induced Topic Search. It is an algorithm for ranking the web pages based on the relevance factor of the information that is present inside that particular web page. Now it measures a page relevance and importance based on the authorities as well as the hub score. Now we already have seen the concept of authority and hub scores. Now this HITS algorithm is widely used in search engines to find the relevant web pages based on the query that is fired by the user. Now this hits algorithm is popular for its accuracy as well as the relevance of the search results that it gives after a particular query is fired. So I hope the concept of hits algorithm 
as well as the hubs and authorities is clear to you all. Now we will be looking into a very interesting example which will tell you how this HITS algorithm is relevant for finding the hubs and authority score as well as for finding the best hub and the authority node. So now the example says that we need to compute the hub and authority score for the given matrix using the HITS algorithm. Now here the k value is given as 6 which is nothing but the number of iterations that we have to perform. And finally based on the hubs and authority score we need to identify the best hub and authority node. Now here you can see the matrix is given. This particular matrix is 4 cross 4 because there are 4 nodes that are present in this particular scenario. And in each record you can see that there is either 0 or 1. 0 means there is no link and 1 means there is a link. So let's try to construct the graph which is nothing but the nodes and its connections to each other based on this particular matrix that is given to us. So according to the matrix, the matrix is 4 cross 4 hence there will be 4 nodes and the name of the nodes are A, B, C and D. So now we need to construct the connections between these nodes. So always remember in the matrix we always have to move from the top to the left like this. So here you can see on the top we have first A and on the left we have first A. This means we are moving from A to A and the record mapping to this position contains the value 0. That means there is no connection from A to A which means A node is not getting self connected. So I hope this is clear. Now let's move on further. Now next we have the B node on the top and on the left we have the A node and the value that is mapping over here is 1. That means from B to A there is a connection. Hence we will draw this particular arrow which is going to originate from B and will end at A. Similarly we will shift to the right. Now on the top we have the node C and on the left we have the node A. So the value that is mapping over here is 1. So from C to A there will be one connection something like this which will originate from C and will end at A. Again we will move to the right. Now at the top we have D and on the left we have A. So the value that is mapping at this particular location is 1. That means from D to A there will be one single connection which is going to originate from D and end at A. Something like this. So I hope this is clear. Now we'll move on to the second record. Now again we'll start from the first node from the top which is A. So from A to B we have no connection. Now we'll move to the right. Now from B to B we have the value as 0 that means there is no connection from B to B. Now from C to B we have the value as 1. That means there is an arrow that is originating from C and is ending at B. Similarly, the next starting node is D and ending node is B. So the value that is mapping over here is 1. Hence, there will be an arrow which will originate from D and will end at B. Now moving to the third record, the value from A to C is 1. That means there is a connection which is going to originate from A and will end at C. Next, we have the value from B to C as 0. That means there is no connection from B to C. Next, we have the value from C to C which is 0. Hence, there will be no connection. Next, we have the value from D to C as 1. That means there will be an arrow from D to C. Similarly, moving forward, now from A to D, the value is 0. That means there will be no connection. Similarly, from B to D, the value is 0. There is no connection. From C to D also, there is the value as 0. Hence, there will be no connection. Now, from D to D, there is the value as 1. That means there is a self loop over here. The arrow is originating at D and it is ending at D only. So this is the final graph that we have constructed with the help of this particular matrix. And this graph is going to help us to find out the hubs and authority score. So now let's start finding the hubs and authority score. So always remember the initial hub score will always be initiated as 1. We will be giving a convention for the hub score for every node. So for the node A, we'll denote the hub score as HA. For the node B, we'll denote the hub score as HB and so on. And all of this hub score will be initiated as 1 at the very start. Now, based on this hub score, we are going to start with our iteration. And this is our first iteration. So this is the graph that we have. And now we'll start with the first iteration. 
So always remember the first thing that you need to find out in any of the iteration is the authority score. So by the term authority, it must be cleared that we are concerned with the incoming links. We need to find out the authority score for each node. So the starting node is A node. The authority convention for A node will be AA. So you can see that for the node A, there are three incoming arrows that are getting originated from the nodes B, C and D. Now for a node which is having the maximum number of incoming links, the links that are getting originated will be from a hub node and hence we are going to add the hub score for all these nodes B, C and D to get the authority score for the node A. So the hub score for all of them is 1. So hence 1 plus 1 plus 1 gives us 3. Moving on to the next authority node which is B. So you can see for the node B we have only two incoming arrows which is from the node C and D. Hence we'll add the hub score for C and D which is 1 plus 1 will get 2 as the authority score for the node B. Similarly for the authority score for the node C, we have only 2 incoming arrows from the node A and D, hence the authority score is 2. For the node D, there is only a single incoming arrow which is from the node D itself and hence the authority score for the D node is 1. So I hope it's clear how to calculate the authority score for every single node. Now, once you calculate the authority score, you need to normalize these authority score. Normalizing means getting all the authority scores in a particular range. So let's start to normalize the authority score. So for normalizing, we are going to divide every single authority score with the addition of all the authority score of each and every node. So you can see here that if we add the authority score of each node that is 3 plus 2 plus 2 plus 1 we get it as 8. Now we have to divide this 8 number with each of the authority score that we have got earlier and that will be our normalized score. So you can see for the node A we have 3 by 8 which is 0 0.3750. So this will be the normalized score for the node A. Similarly we will be calculating for the other nodes also. So I hope the concept of normalization of of the authority scores of each and every node is clear to you all. Now once we calculate the normalized authority score, now we have to calculate the hub score for each and every node. Now by the term hub, you should be aware of the term outgoing. Now here for every node, we'll have to calculate the total number of outgoing arrows to the nodes that it is pointing to. So if you look at the node A, here the outgoing arrow is only one, which is pointing to the node C. Hence, we have to write the authority score of the node C, which will now be the hub score of the node A, which is 0.25. Similarly, for the node B, you can see that there is only a single outgoing arrow, which is pointing to node A. Hence, the authority score of the node A will be the hub score of the node B, which is 0.3750. Now, for node C, you can see that there are two outgoing arrows, one for the node A and one for the node B. Now in this scenario where the outgoing links are more than one, then in this case you have to add the authority score of all the nodes for which it is pointing and that will be your hub score for the node C which is 0 0.6250. Now for the node D you can see that it is pointing to all the nodes including itself. Hence if we add all the values of the authority score of each and every node that it is pointing to will get the value as 1. So I hope the concept of calculating the hub score is clear to you all. Now again once we calculate the hub score now we need to calculate the normalized hub score. Again for normalizing we'll have to add all the hub score and whatever value we get we'll have to divide that particular value from all the hub scores for getting the normalized hub scores. So after adding we get the addition as 2.25. So we'll now divide every single hub score with 2.25. So we'll get these particular value. And these are the normalized hub score. So I hope it is clear. Now this was the iteration 1. Similarly we have to do the 6 iterations to get the final output. Now note one thing that for the next iteration we'll have to carry forward this normalized hub score so that we can use that to calculate the 
authority score now. So I'll write this normalized hub scores that we have got from the previous iteration results like this. And using these scores, we'll be calculating the next iteration's authority score. So you can see this is the iteration 2. Now we'll be calculating the authority score, which is nothing but the incomings. So as you know that for the node A there are 3 incoming arrows that means you will have to add the hub score of each and every node which is pointing to the node A to get the authority score for the node A. So here from the previous results we have got the hub score for node B as 0.1667, for node C it is 0.2778, for node D it is 0.4444 and now we have to add it to get 0.8889 which is nothing but the authority score for A. Similarly, for the node B, we have two incoming arrows from the node C and D. So we'll have to add the hub scores of it. Similarly, for node C, we have two incoming arrows from the node A and D. So just add the hub score of both of them to get the authority score of the node C. Similarly, for the node D, we have only one incoming arrows that is from the node D itself. So the hub score of node D will be the authority score of node D. So once we calculate the authority score, the next step is to calculate the normalized authority score. This is done by adding the values that we have got from the authority score from all the nodes and then we'll have to divide this particular value from every single authority score that we have got from the previous step to get the normalized authority score. So you can see that the added value is 2.611 and hence we have divided each authority score by this particular value to get the normalized authority score. Now once we calculate this normalized authority score, we'll be calculating the hub score. Now this is based on the normalized authority score. So you can see that here we have to focus on the outgoing arrows. For the node A, there is only one outgoing arrows which is pointing to C. So the authority score of the node C will be the hub score of the node A, which is 0.2128. Similarly, there is only one outgoing arrow from the node B which is pointing to the node A. So the authority score of node A will be the hub score of node B. Now for node C, we can see that there are two outgoing arrows which are pointing to the node A and B. So we'll have to add the normalized authority score of A, A and B to get the hub score for C. Similarly, we, for node D, it is pointing to all the nodes and hence we'll have to add the normalized authority score of all the nodes that it is pointing to to get the hub score for node D. Now once we calculate the hub scores, now we'll have to calculate the normalized hub scores. This is done by adding all the values that we have got from the hub score and then we have to divide this particular value from each and every hub score to get the normalized hub score. Now this normalized hub score will be used to calculate the authority scores in the next iteration. So we'll have to take this from the previous results. So you can see that I have displayed the normalized hub scores that we have got from the previous iteration. And now we'll be using this for calculating the authority scores in the iteration three. So you can see that again, there is same procedure. Here we have to consider every single node Whichever node is actually pointing to a particular node will have to add the hub score of all of them to get the authority score of that particular node. So in short same step is followed again. Now next we have to calculate the normalized authority score. This can be done by adding all the authority score and then using this addition value we have to divide each authority score by this added value to get the normalized authority score. Now this normalized authority score values will be used for calculating the hub scores. Similarly, here we have to consider the outgoing links. For example, for the node A, it is pointing to the node C. Hence, the normalized authority sc score of node C will be assigned as hub score of A. Once we calculate the hub scores, now we have to normalize it. This can again be done by simply dividing each hub score with this added value. Hence, we'll be getting the normalized hub score. So this normalized hub score now again will be used in the next iteration to calculate the authority score. So again, we have to follow the same steps in the iteration four also. So now let's move on to the iteration four. So here you can see that I have taken forwarded this normalized hub score values 
for the next iteration so now in this iteration 4 we have to use this normalized hub score values for calculating the authority score which are nothing but the incomings once we calculate the authority score we have to calculate the normalized authority score so these are the normalized authority score for this particular iteration next we have to calculate the hub score for each and every node with the help of the normalized authority score values now once we calculate the hub score for each node we have to now calculate the normalized hub score values for this particular iteration now if you carefully look at the normalized hub score values of this particular iteration and the normalized hub score values of the previous iteration so you can see they are almost same there is only a slight difference between them as we move forward with the iterations the normalized hub scores from the previous iteration and the current iteration will be getting more and more similar and finally it will be one and the same now let's see in iteration 5 what we get as the normalized hub score we'll be using the previous iteration results of normalized hub score to find out the authority scores in this particular iteration again we have to follow the same procedure first authority score then normalized authority score after finding normalized authority score we'll have to find the hub score after hub score we'll have to find the normalized hub score so now in this particular step if you carefully look the normalized hub score of each node is same as the normalized hub score that we have got in the previous iteration isn't it so whenever you get the same results legally you can stop here but if you want to check the values in the next iteration that is the sixth iteration which is the last iteration according to the problem that was given then you can take this normalized hub score and then again try to calculate the authority score and normalized authority score and so on in the next iteration so let's do that also and let's take this normalized hub score to the next iteration and then find the authority score so this is the previous iteration results of the normalized hub score and now this is the sixth iteration so these are the authorities and normalized authority scores and these are the hub score and the normalized hub score so you can see that again we are getting the same normalized hub score which was there in the previous iteration and this is the point where we need to stop for calculating the authorities as well as the hub score so you can see this is the final values that we have got for the normalized authority score and the normalized hub score now considering these normalized authority values out of these values we'll have to check which is the maximum value here the maximum normalized authority score value is for the node a and similarly for the normalized hub score the maximum normalized hub score is of the node D. So now you can see we have got these two nodes. So finally you can conclude that the best authority node is A because it is having the highest authority score and the authority score is 0.3383. Similarly you can write that the best hub node is the node D because it is having the highest hub score which is 0.4618 so a is the best authority node and d is the best hub node you can see from the graph also a is having the highest number of incoming arrows from the other nodes and d is having the highest number of outgoing arrows hence a is the best authority node and d is the best hub node so i hope calculating the hubs and authority score with the help of the hits algorithm is very much clear to you all if you guys have any single doubt then you can post it in the comment section or if you have any reviews or suggestions then you can post it too and it's my humble request to you all that please subscribe if you like my videos because your one single small subscription motivates me a lot to make more such fruitful and amazing videos in future and finally like share and don't forget to follow me on instagram and yeah thanks for watching and have a good day ahead